Saints Row is an embarrassing buggy mess. Another in an increasingly long list of reboots and remakes that are worse than the games they're based off. When I was coming up with titles for this video, I was thinking things along the lines of Saints Row 76 or Saints Row 2077 because that's truly what it feels like at times. It's really another one of those instances where a developer is releasing a game that's like 80% finished. And while history has shown that these games can eventually be turned around, I don't think that excuses this being yet another busted game that unsuspecting customers are expected to pay full price for. How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all of your favorite franchises go down in flames? Feels great. <laughs> Now it's kind of weird when trying to make comparisons with this reboot to the originals because this series is about as schizophrenic as they come. I mean the gameplay in the first game for instance is going to be completely polarizing when comparing it to Gat Out of Hell. But I feel like throughout the franchise there's always been a pretty consistent theme of the games being fun and not taking themselves too seriously. <laughs> I know the argument about whether 2 or 3 were better is a long running one, but Saints Row 3 is the one that I had the most fun with personally, and along with the second game I'd argue it's when the series really peaked. I will wreck this one pretty fast! So if we use either of those as the poster child for how to make a Saints Row game, well then I think that it's safe to say this reboot fails in almost every single aspect. was really a stupid thing! Even from the get-go, trying to self-insert into the game here was just an absolute mission. And I say that because I think this has to be one of the worst character creators that I've ever seen. <laughs> I know this might be good news for people who think it's funny to create ugly characters, but can someone explain to me why even the preset face models somehow look like they've gone through the randomizer in Elder Scrolls Oblivion? I'm not kidding either, these are preset faces. And who in their right mind is going to choose something like this? What is that? In the old games, I'd usually pick a preset character and then build something off the back of that, but even the presets in this are still awful. Looking like the kind of people who don't play video games, but are still offended by them. Also, in the first example of this game being lazy, you can now modify your appearance at any time by just bringing up this app in your smartphone. Yeah, never mind going to the plastic surgeons that have been a staple of the series, you know, since its inception. When it comes to the wacky outfits and fun clothes, you know, another long-running staple, don't hold your breath either. The cosmetics this time are incredibly limited, and at best, you're gonna feel like you're playing dress up as a gangster, you know, as opposed to actually being one. And that right there is the entire vibe that I get from this reboot. It's kind of like a sheep in wolf's clothing, if that makes sense, desperately trying to pass itself off as cool and hip. Good call. Showtime. And I feel like I could end the video right here, but to be honest, I'm just getting started. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Oh. Visually, it looks like something from the Xbox 360. Now, I know that people say that a lot these days to describe dated graphics, but it's really true this time. And you'll see that a lot here with some of the character models, most of which just look really bad. The main cast do look detailed enough, but almost every single other NPC you come across looks really crappy. And the other members of the Saints just look awful. I mean, this guy here looks like Titan from Megamind and just compare how they all look to the Saints in the third game. You know what the visuals here really reminded me of? It reminds me of those crappy remake videos you see on YouTube. You know where someone takes a bunch of stock assets off the Unreal Engine library and then remakes something like Grand Theft Auto or Max Payne? And as a result, it ends up looking completely soulless, like it's being created by a machine. Yeah, you know that? Well, that's what the world feels like here. It may be vast, but it's also empty, boring, and lifeless. You'll frequently drive through empty streets and walk down random side alleys and you'll come across empty restaurants, markets and bars. Like someone added all this stuff into the world but then they just forgot to populate it. Whether or not the game looks good or bad also often seems to be dependent on the time of day. I mean it does look good during sunrise and sunset but in low light conditions and at night time the whole thing just looks awful. What's really the most entertaining here though are the physics which are just so broken and absurd that it's just downright hilarious at times. I'd like to think that this stuff has been done intentionally, but it's just so janky and busted that I think what's more likely is that it's just something that someone's overlooked. Like the physics you see when you blow up vehicles honestly defies the laws of nature. Shoot a car with an RPG for instance and you can see the weird way the car is propelled forward and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that that's not how physics work. Hang on, some 
What I find funniest, I think, is how every time you blow up a vehicle, you just see these ragdoll corpses fly off into the sky, and it's always done in this incredibly bizarre and over-the-top fashion. <laughs> now look, I know that these games have always been a bit wacky, but there's still been like some sense of restraint here when it comes to the game obeying the laws of nature. You know, as opposed to it looking like a complete jank fest. During the many car chases in the game, you'll notice how pursuing cars ram into other vehicles and don't lose momentum at all. You know, they just push these cars out of their way like those cars are made out of cotton candy. I mean, do I really have to pull out an old comparison clip from a game like Grand Theft Auto to show just how dumb this is? There's stuff that goes on in this game that was so random that I had to clip it and then go back just to figure out what actually happened. Like it's so random sometimes that if you blink you're gonna miss what actually went on. I mean like check this out for instance, right? This bollard thing came out of the ground over there, flew out and then hit that telegraph pole which sent that thing out in the sky. You know what, I'm gonna say that you could drive into a million bollards for a million years and never see that happen in real life. And yet these are the kind of reality defying physics you will regularly see when playing this. Power that the world wants you to know. I know people give developers like Ubisoft a lot of shit for their games, but credit where it's due, man. I don't think they've ever made a game world this busted. Well, apart from Assassin's Creed Unity. Kind of reminds me of playing a game like Postal 4, only that was a game where the world was kind of broken ironically. I just don't think Volition set out to create a game world that feels like something out of an early access game. Yeah, that's a bit odd. <laughs> what the fuck? And again, what I think's happened is just a complete incompetency when dealing with the game's engine. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Physics. I don't think we've all forgotten a few months back when Grand Theft Auto got remastered with the so-called Definitive Edition. It's embarrassing to be seen with you. And it's like I'm having deja vu, man, seeing all these weird technical issues coming up all over again. Oh, and if you thought the rain effect in that Definitive Edition was bad, well, wait until you check out the one in Saints Row. How this thing got past testing is anyone's guess. Guys, we're really good at what we do. Oh, yeah, here we go. Whack! Holy shit. Even just simple oversights, like my bandana clipping through my sunglasses. Lazy. It's beautiful. Sadly, the story isn't going to really win you over either, and the characters and the writing in this thing just makes it feel like you're playing the Netflix adaptation of Saints Row. You know what I mean? Like it's been made by someone who doesn't really have any idea of what they're adapting or even their target market, which is why instead of goat characters like Johnny Gat, Shaundi, and Pierce, we get Eli, Dina, and Kevin. We're fucking done waiting! I really didn't find the dialogue very good in this, and look, I don't know if I'm just at an age where I don't find 20-something-year-olds all that appealing, but I think it's more than that. I just don't think they're very interesting characters to begin with, nor are they that original either. Like the trope of the jock guy who walks around with his shirt off the entire time and makes cringe jokes about his physique and going to the gym. Dinner and a show, baby. <laughs> I mean, that shit's been played out since Brucey in GTA 4. Or how about Eli, the super nerdy, awkward guy with the glasses who just happens to be into D&D style LARPing? And look, can I just go off on a bit of a side tangent here? Hasn't that joke about LARPing in video games been done to death at this point? And I feel like every single video game that comes out these days always has some kind of mission making fun of this. Tiny Tina came out a few months back and that whole game was essentially just one big LARPing simulator. We're playing bonkers and badasses, baby! Also, look, it's 2022, all right? A quirky nerd character in a video game ain't that quirky anymore, considering half the population acts and dresses like that these days. Yeah, I get that it's a nod to Kenzie from the old games, but back then, she was still a pretty unique character. Eli, on the other hand, just looks like a Fortnite character model. Apart from that, the characters make really bad jokes about being on social media and having followers, like we're back in 2012. Ooh, I'm gonna post about it. Yada, yada, da, yada, da, da, da. Hashtag take me to church, hashtag new digs who this, hashtag list, and post it. Oh yeah, and count the amount of times you hear someone use the word capitalist. How do post-capitalists support a house this big? Good God, the man's either a monster or a capitalist genius. They said something about striking a blow against capitalistic materialism and soggy french fries. I mean, did the writers forget that in the previous games the Saints were literally a brand name? I mean, the third game literally opens with a Tropic Thunder style intro for one of their energy drinks. 
I don't know, maybe it makes sense in that this is an origin story and the gang haven't sold it out yet. Wow. At least we've got a cool logo. It all starts with you and your buddies working for different gangs before then deciding to go out on your own and create the Saints. The Saints. We call ourselves the Saints. And I probably don't need to say that the previous factions you and your buddies worked for then formed the main enemy factions for the rest of the game. Kill you all! But ignoring their predictable writing here, I just didn't find any of this stuff all that captivating. And look, I'm sorry man, but I just don't want to be friends with someone who orders white wine spritzes. That's like the kind of thing your weird old auntie with the purple hair drinks. Can I have a white wine spritzer? And wait a minute, did they just put a subtitle in for someone diving over a bar? What? Smells like privilege in here. Oh no, God! After a mission that ends with you getting fired from your job, there's this whole sequence where you're moping around your apartment like a moody teenager. At one point, you literally have to press the space bar to get out of bed, multiple times, along with then pressing E to toast waffles, all while you slowly meander around your apartment with your shoulders hung low like you're doing the Charlie Brown walk from Arrested Development. And look, I'm not trying to be some grumpy old boomer complaining about everything, but I can honestly say that I don't think I laughed a single time in any of the scenes in this game. Most of the time it's like your eavesdropping on NPCs in Elder Scrolls. Oh? The targets on my list have some heavy hitters in their corner. You leave anything lower than five stars, they'll come out swinging. The lower the review, the harder they hit. Now we're talking. Count me in. Well, yeah, speaking of Elder Scrolls, there's a line in there at one point where someone makes fun of Todd Howard. Really? How does that work? It works. Yeah, but how? It just works? Yeah, that's pretty brave words in a game where stuff like this happens. <laughs> then soon after that, someone else makes a joke about microtransactions. Again, another stone in glass houses moment, considering the history of some of the Saints games. What's this 299 stuff? It's but a microtransaction. We're in the money, oh, I'm on the honey. Even the other members of the Saints who eventually recruit just look kind of lame, and if a gang member in a Saints Row game looks like the kind of person you could beat up yourself in real life, well, then something's gone horribly wrong. The only time I laughed in the entire playthrough here, which to be honest, actually broke me, was hearing this one random bit of NPC dialogue when I was still on the bus. Stop blocking me! I gotta take a shit! Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh. hell. Did you hear what he said? No, I just saw you jump through the window and then someone T-spawned and fucking landed in front of the car. <laughs> he just shouts out, Stop <laughs> Stop blocking me, I've gotta take a shit. But I think by that point, the laughter was probably just from sleep deprivation. <laughs> Stop fucking me, I've gotta take a shit. <laughs> now, if you played any of the previous games, well, things are gonna feel pretty familiar here, with missions being broken down into either driving or shooting, often a combination of both. And the combat feels very similar to Saints Row 3 and 4. You killed my buddy! I have my theories on this, and it honestly wouldn't surprise me if they just copied and pasted the way combat works in the old games and just put it straight into this one, because it really does just feel almost identical. I mean, you're even using the exact same weapons, the same pistols, assault rifles in the RPG. There's even the same animations for basic actions like running around and jumping through the windscreen of cars when you're trying to jack them. Time for your exercise! Don't worry, it's cool. The main thing they've added though is the focus meter. Now this thing builds up during combat and lets you perform special moves and admittedly some of these are pretty cool. Like shoving a grenade down someone's trousers and then throwing them off into a group of enemies. You've got a fire punch that looks like something Ken or Ryu would pull off. There's an ability that makes it so shooting enemies heals you. You can even toss out an anti-gravity grenade that causes enemies to float in the air. These are your so-called skills and unlocked automatically as you level up, with 20 levels in total. Yeah, gone is that extensive list of upgrades you'd have to work for and purchase, replaced with this run-of-the-mill laundry list of skills that the game gives you automatically at specific levels. And I'm sure some of these have been lifted from the previous games, but you know what, if nothing else, it does make a welcome change to just aiming down sights and shooting. 
which is what you're going to be doing 90% of the time here because the enemy AI is just absolutely brain dead. Ignoring the fact that they spend most of the time standing still or just completely bugged out, even when they are coming after you, they're really no threat at all. Most enemies are either coming at you with a melee weapon or hanging back with a ranged one, and it's never more than just shooting them until they die from it. It's really just boring, mindless stuff, and about the only delineation here are these armored enemies, but that's really just an enemy having two health bars instead of one. It's kind of hard to overstate just how bizarre the enemy behavior can be sometimes. I've seen instances where the enemies stop mid-combat to take selfies, which I guess is supposed to be funny. But the combat is often so janky and busted that it's hard to differentiate between when the enemies are doing this on purpose, or when it's because of the engine's spaghetti code having a goddamn meltdown. When you've got big groups of enemies and multiple factions on screen at once, you can really see the AI for how bad it is. As you see, all of these mobs just kind of mash into each other, and it really makes it feel like you're playing an unfinished game. And again, during all of this, you'll frequently see the physics go apeshit, and NPCs doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Oh! Upgrading weapons is also now based off your player level as opposed to how much cash you have, and only at levels 5, 10, 15, and 20 can you upgrade these, which is kind of stupid. Plus, each weapon now has a signature ability, but these are unlocked from completing a specific requirement, and a lot of the time, they're just not that much of a game changer anyway. Who else wants to take us on? So for almost the entire campaign here, I think I just used that starting rifle and the pistol. I mean, there was just never any reason to use anything else, considering both those guns did the job fine, and they mowed down most enemies without any real dramas. <laughs> I know that a lot of the more fun weapons in the previous games came in the DLC packs, but you think that maybe this time Volition would have learned their lesson and included some more fun stuff from the get-go? Well, guess not. But the absolute best and worst thing here are the takedown animations. I don't have time for this shit today! In the other games, from memory, you could pull these off at any time, but this time around, they're almost essential. Because the only way to get your health back during combat is by performing these preset takedowns on nearby enemies, and that might be fine, only some of these go on for like 5 seconds, and they're often bugged to shit as well. If you hated the glory kills in Doom Eternal because you thought they were too long, well then wait until you get a load of this stuff. Yeah, and I love too how everyone just stands around in the background waiting for their turn to attack you. Reminds me of that one fight scene from the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah. And check out this one too. Ah. Hey, fucking loser. I mean, did he just kick her in the baby maker? Ah. The missions rarely seem to evolve past just running around and shooting people over and over, or driving away in a car, then shooting people over and over. And you'll shoot so many pursuing vehicles during some of these story missions that the whole thing just becomes so boring. I don't think it's all bad though. There's a Mad Max inspired mission early on, which I thought was pretty fun, even if it has some of the worst tweening that I've ever seen. Later on, you get to drive a bulldozer through a construction site, and then later on, a monster truck, and both of these I thought were pretty enjoyable too. You even get to drive a tank on a train, and that was all kinds of awesome. Welcome to Plan F, motherfucker! But these are mostly forgettable, run-of-the-mill missions, and you won't be escaping a secret lab with a 7-foot-tall, bare-ass ex-KGB agent, let's put it that way. I bite my bum at thee! So what's the whole end game here? Well, apart from finishing the main story missions, your end goal is to again build an empire, and this is again about taking over the city piece by piece. We are in business. I love it. This is done firstly by completing all those side activities over and over, like wingsuit jumping from building to building and destroying all these satellite dishes. And with time to spare, nice work. Or leaving bad food reviews on your smartphone to cause a violent backlash. You hit him where it hurts. There's drug pallets to find and photos to take, though this time there's no sex dolls, because I guess drugs are perfectly fine, but sex jokes are off the table. But more importantly than that, you've got to establish the saint's presence in a business sense. And across the city are all these vacant lots that you can snatch up and use as a front for your totally legitimate businesses. Like a food truck service that deals drugs around the city, sounds familiar? A toxic waste disposal service, a laundromat company that cleans up crime scenes, and of course a medical center filing false claims against people for insurance fraud. But to fully unlock these, you have to complete side missions for each of them, and these are so fucking tedious to get through. Like for the toxic waste disposal, you've got to find all these trucks around the city carrying these volatile chemicals, and then drive the truck all the way back to the dumping site. That's good right there, boss. If you drive too slow or have too many crashes, you damage the barrels, and the idea is to get them back all there in one piece for a cash bonus. 
And hey, look, this might be fine if you only had to do it four or five times, but instead you need to do it for 14 trucks. 14. Thunder Rock. And some of these are off like in the middle of the desert, so yeah man, have fun driving this thing off-road and trying to get it back in one piece. <laughs> even for the food trucks, even though it's only like five missions, it still feels super drawn out and tedious. <laughs> Each time you need to take out a few waves of spawning enemies before you can even steal the truck. Then as you drive this thing back, you're constantly being attacked by spawning in vehicles. Once you reach the site, you're still not done because now you've got to wipe out all the enemies that were in pursuit. And having to do this five times, it really starts to feel like a chore. Park the truck in our lot and finish them off. Oh, For the insurance fraud and the crime scene jobs, again, there's seven of these you need to do. And it's almost like the person who came up with these numbers just thought up a random number in their head. They do say though, that if you ask someone to think of a random number from one to 10, that most of the time people are gonna think of the number seven. So maybe there's more truth to that than I realize. And yes, I know the games have always been super grindy when it comes to unlocking things, but it's never felt this bad to me. And consider too that all up, there's over a dozen ventures in the game to get through, and you need to have completed a certain amount of these to even progress through some of the main missions. I don't know, I always used to find all of the side stuff the most fun to do in the other Saints Row games. Here though, it was the bane of my entire playthrough, and it really shouldn't have been. Yeah. But by far, the biggest issue this game has are the bugs. Oh man, fucking bucks. What is that? I was gonna compare this to Cyberpunk, but I don't think that's fair to Cyberpunk. I mean, that game definitely had its fair share of problems, but I still think it was mostly playable. Plus it had way more scope than this does, so you could actually see the potential. Shit, son. Saints Row, on the other hand, like I've been saying, feels like I'm playing something in early access. So, is this how it's gonna be every time we have to pay rent? Now I know that some of this stuff might be fixed in the future, but all I can do at this point is honestly explain the stuff that I witnessed during the time I played the game. I mean, I'd rather be honest about it than try to sweep it under the rug. <laughs> like how about for starters, how hitting fire hydrants causes your car to get launched up into the air. I was driving around at one point, and then suddenly I teleported out of my car, only to turn around and see the car floating on a nearby hydrant. So at that point, I got like two bugs for the price of one. Ah! You'll see the AI-driven cars just randomly crash and explode, or go apeshit and drive like absolute maniacs for no apparent reason. <laughs> There's frequent glitches during cinematics, and when driving around, it's common to see cars off in the distance just vanish entirely as you get close, like they're ghost cars. It's a ghost car! At one point, my character just kept reloading his pistol over and over, stuck in this perpetual animation sequence. During one mission, I had to kill a bunch of cops, but they spawned on a nearby highway and I couldn't even shoot at them. So when I ran off to try and get them into my field of view, I suddenly got told I was leaving the mission area, and then I failed the mission. Okay. The riding shotgun side mission also glitched out a couple of times for me too. Now this is the one where you're on the back of someone's car shooting at pursuing vehicles, but a couple of times that I did this, there were no cars pursuing us at all. So many regrets! Another side task involves blowing up hidden police fans, and a few times these were just indestructible and I couldn't even damage them. But the worst one by far though was insurance fraud. Now anyone who's played the Saints Row games knows what's up here. It's a really fun mini game where you need to throw yourself into oncoming traffic to try to rack up a bunch of points. Well, the first time I tried this, there were no cars, like nothing spawned in at all. All right, so I restarted the mission and this time there were cars at first, but then after like a minute, again, the cars stopped spawning in. So I restarted a third time. This time there were cars, but then after a minute or so it stopped because all the cars got gridlocked at a nearby intersection and then there was a huge pileup. I guess the benefit to this happening was that I could exploit it to my advantage and actually complete the mission. And look again, I'd laugh if this was done ironically, but I really doubt they made it this intentionally broken. Even during the toxic oh, waste disposal, half the time it wouldn't let me stop on the final marker, despite me parking directly on top of the stupid fucking thing. When I eventually turned this mission in for the final time, my camera started spinning around like Christopher Reeves from the end of Superman 1, like it was flying around the planet to try to bring back Lois Lane from the dead. Maybe next time they'll drive their own damn trucks to the dump. Nice. And this is just the stuff that I've experienced in my playthrough. This is really going to be another one of those games that does the rounds on Twitter and YouTube, with people posting compilations of all of the wacky stuff that they're coming across. Oh yeah, and don't think that the co-op mode got spared either. 
Yeah, nice bro. one, bro. <laughs> For some reason, co-op mode, it's like everything what? wrong with the game seems to be amplified. Like all the errors are now dialed up to 11. Oh, what the um, fuck? And during the brief time I tried to play the co-op mode with a mate, we had our own laundry list of bugs. <laughs> Like seeing my mate's disembodied torso floating in the air during loading screens. During that Mad Max mission, there were times when I'd just randomly die for no reason. I kept trying to jump from car to car, and I'd die just as soon as I landed, despite having a full health bar. Um, I died. At one point, my field of view got stuck in like a zoomed in position. And as we're driving around, all of the cars on the road got replaced with NPCs who just stood there like zombies letting me drive into them. Bro, my screen, I'm hitting pedestrians. Yeah, you're hitting cars, <laughs> and there's just no one in the fucking cars. Oh wow, this game cost it. This is all, of course, along with the expected crashes and disconnections we suffered from constantly. And I just got kicked again. And I think this might be one of the biggest screw-ups of all, because I know a lot of people who play these games exclusively for the co-op mode. And for it to be this busted is going to sting quite a bit. Yeah, because we've been so careful with sun. What?! I know that people like to use the old day one patch as a defense for this kind of thing. And hey, look, maybe that might fix some of this stuff. And months later down the track, once they add in more content and DLC, the proper style, charm, and character of this series might return. But I mean, at that point, is anyone really going to care anymore? We're really at a point with gaming where it really is becoming a bit of a disposable medium. And once you play and finish something, it's kind of like you wash your hands and then be done with it. I'm not saying every single game is like that, but it does seem that like the majority of games these days, especially the open world ones, are the kind of thing you play through, finish, and then just never really touch again. It's like, look, I enjoyed playing through Far Cry 6, but I've got no intention to ever go back and touch it again, and that's a game that for the most part was pretty polished and bug-free. Saints Row might scratch that itch for some people, and if you can overlook the myriad of problems it has, maybe you can find some enjoyment here too. <laughs> But I think just overlooking how busted this game is at times, and being so complacent about mediocrity, is the reason why the industry is so stagnant these days. Maybe in a way it's a good thing they didn't bring back the OG characters like Johnny Gat, because I think the sight of them having to be in this version of the Saints universe might have been too much to bear. Stop blocking me! I gotta take a shit! <laughs> 